Ciao ragazzi, oggi per H Academy abbiamo un ospite speciale che è, arriva direttamente dall'America, ora ci parlerà di lui. Oggi abbiamo Steve, Steve Gibson. Hi Steve, nice to have you here in Italy. Thanks. Thank yeah. you for having me. We Appreciate are very it, proud. We are very proud me. to have you. Honored to be here. Yes. Yes. So here we are in Roma for a nice show. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. uh, Eternal City show. It's it, been um, fantastic. Yes. Uh, my first time doing a show here or, or a show in Italy. Um, and it has been uh, the hospitality has been amazing. Uh, the art incredible. The bikes and the custom building. Um, On, on par with nothing else. Just yes. amazing work. Yes. Your work was fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations on your <laughs> Thank work you. today. Thank you very much, yeah. but we, we are not talking about me, but oh. we want to talk about your incredible okay. art. Thank you. You are a really talented artist. So everybody here in Italy is uh, curious to know what about... Uh, my background and yeah, my history. Yeah, your background and your history. From. So tell us about you. Okay. First, where are you come from? I come from right outside Atlantic City, New Jersey, which is about two hours south of New York City on the east coast okay. of the United States. Okay. So that's my location. Uh, east coast to... Yes. Yeah. Um, my background, I think like most artists, I've, I've been doing art since I could, I could remember, since I could pick up a pencil. I had a love for it, an affinity for it. Um, I studied at university, um, took painting, traditional classes like that. My first art job out of that was painting murals in Atlantic City, New Jersey for casinos. Murals? Murals, hand-painted traditional oh. murals. Um, so I'm traditionally trained in, in acrylic and oil paint. Um, sorry, sorry, but murals with, with a brush? Murals with a brush. Okay. So my early days were no airbrushing So let's say sign painting. Something I like worked that. with a lot of billboard artists and okay. sign painters okay. back in the mid-1990s. Okay. is kind of where That's I, great. as we say, we cut, I cut my teeth. Okay. Um, So everything was hand painted. Uh, I have a love of classic art, uh, traditional oil practices and techniques. That was what was required of me um, at this company uh, for me to keep my job, so yeah. to speak. So um, it was a lot like a, a traditional apprenticeship at first. Um, once I got good and acclimated, I got a pay raise and, and more full-time work. Um, and it was a neat time, it was a, a real time of growth. I learned more there than I did in university by far. Um, however, when I was in university, I would say my love of art history really came into play. So I feel like things served double. It, it, my, my work with the mural company gave me my technical skill set, but, but my university education um, really fed, fed my curiosity for the history and the traditions of what, you know, what I practice today. Um, the airbrush is something that I came by uh, both curiously and kind of naturally. I was always drawn to it as, as a tool. Uh, most of my friends and peers at the time, back 25 years ago. Yeah. How many years later since you started? I, I mean, I've been 22 years probably with an airbrush ah, in my okay. hand. Um, I'm in my mid, I'm 46 years old. So okay. I would say about 22 years old, maybe a little bit. Okay. About 22 I came and into the airbrush. And how old are you now? 46. 46. So 20, 24 yes. years with an airbrush in my okay. hand. Sometimes I wouldn't use an airbrush for years. Um, most of the people that I worked with didn't use an airbrush and there wasn't much respect for it in the traditional fine art world, I would say, or, or, or murals and, and sign painting. Um, I burnt out on the mural thing and got tired of it. I took a job at a sign shop that required a lot more airbrushing okay. in the early 2000s. Um, that's where I was introduced to House of Color yeah, yeah. and started using House of Color. Um, I started using it more as a painting tool and a, a kind of a fine art uh, tool the same way and I was using a paintbrush at the time. Uh, continued to do that off and on for the next five years. Uh, got tired of the sign work and took a job in a body shop okay. uh, painting cars. Okay. So did a, a short... But just changing colors of body, uh, body shop? Regular insurance, panel painting. Uh. Yeah, the fun. Yeah, did that. Um, a short, I would say, somewhat apprenticeship um, because I was familiar with, with the tools and the production gun and the HBO okay. uh, pickups from the sign shop because I was painting a lot yeah, yeah, of yeah. Uh, cans for some of the, si uh, the signs I was using. So I got used to the, the spray guns uh, and the paint before I moved into automotive. When I moved into automotive, it, and it was, it was typical crash, dense, insurance work, panel painting. A little boring, I uh, think. A bit, but I, but I learned how to do body work. I learned uh, how yes, to hold Yes, of course, dead. you um, learned. I yes, learned from start to yes. finish. Um, 
taking cars apart, putting them back together. Um, shitty help everywhere, learning how to fix their help because people don't like to operate here. So I quickly learned that my, the skills, yeah. my ideas of perfection were not being found in the body shop at okay. that point. Um, I worked there for three years before they even knew I knew how to airbrush or do anything else. Okay. So I just painted cars kept my mouth shut and did what I was told. And and I learned I learned, you know, how to, how to do yeah, preparation. Yeah. I, I learned it all from the ground up. Um, which was invaluable to me today, you know, because I think a lot of what we do, even though it may look beautiful, there's still a function to it. It needs to operate. It needs to be yes. ridden. Um, I I you know, my moniker is fast fine art. It's it's I like to think of it as the quality that I can hang on a wall but I can still rip down the street at 100 miles per hour, 100 kilometers yes, an hour, and it can still withstand the abuse of, of regular road conditions. I, you know, I find that very unique with, with what I do, and I enjoy that. You know, I, I find that um, so, to be a wondrous thing. So now your, your main job is, anyway, eyebrushing. Airbrushing. You, you still work in the body shops? No, or? no, not at all. So what I learned was, I, you know, when I got away from the body shop, as they say, when my hobby was making more money than, yeah. than the body shop was, yeah. it was time to, to start putting my focus there. I did everything that everybody else does as, as an airbrush artist, the true fire, yeah. you know, traditional um, hot rod flames, yeah. striped a little bit, which wasn't my, my, my thing so much. But I tried everything. Um, I found my real joy was doing stuff like this. So. Yeah by day I would do uh, the, the regular commission work skulls and flames and more skulls and yes. more flames and I got good at it but at night I started painting stuff like like this on, on tanks you know okay so what I learned over that amount of time was I did what I had to do to pay my bills but at night I painted what I really what were called to my heart mostly. Yes. Um, Around that time, social media started becoming a, a prominent no, force. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I only shared what I wanted to bring in. So I only shared the best stuff that I did. Nobody saw color matching, fixing Harley yes. graphics. Yes, of course. All of that. Also that, for that me, I had yes. to do. Yeah. yeah, you know. I was only showing the things that I wanted, and soon that was the work people started commissioning me for. Yes. Um, so mainly you work for the, the custom scene, I mean, motorcycles, cars, and that Mot stuff. Motorcycles and cars, and that was it. Yes, um, yes. It was only recently I started doing larger artworks again. I started okay. getting some larger commissions, um, mostly right before the pandemic. And it was, I, and I turned down a lot of work and, and focused just on motorcycle tanks for years. Okay. I, I kind of figured that if I kept my, my focus narrow, I was finding enough work and it didn't confuse me. I knew how long it took me to do things, so it really lended itself to a, a decent business plan for me to, okay. to kind of stay focused on something that I was good. I stopped doing anything pinstriping. I stopped doing anything that didn't ac accommodate or I, I guess, I guess like lead me to work in the direction that I wanted to work for the rest of my life. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of work, a lot of sleepless nights. Um, two young kids and, and uh, I'm still not sleeping 10 years later, yes. but, um, but I got really good at what I was doing simply by working my ass off. Yes. And, um, you, and I'm sure you hear this too. People say, oh, you're so talented, you're gifted, and they don't see all of the hours and all yes, of the of experimenting. Nobody understands the yes. amount of time that goes into getting good at any craft. Yeah, but that's that's normal everywhere. Everywhere. In the United States, in Italy, everywhere. It's the same thing. Yes. Oh, it's easy for you. Oh, yeah. it's, you know, so it shouldn't cost yeah, much money. Yeah, you're so lucky yeah, to do this. Oh, uh, yeah, really lucky, you yeah, know. Practice is absolutely. It's practice, practice, practice. Yes. And I, I do believe, um, was it Michelangelo had a, had a, had a quote uh, of such, and I, yes. I believe it was in one of his journals, um, and he got, I, I think, some of the same uh, the same response from people. Oh, you God-given gift and this and that, and, and his, re his, his answer to that, I believe it was along the lines of, if people knew how hard I worked at my craft, it wouldn't seem so God-given. Yes. And I feel like that with anything, and again, I'm talking about one of the best, but I feel like the, it's the principle behind it. You have to work really hard, and continue to work really Absolutely. hard at it. Um, so, for example, yesterday was a long day yesterday. A long day. But I probably painted 12 hours yesterday yes. Yes. and enjoyed every second of it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we filmed you a little. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I enjoyed it. And, you know, I still want to 
be the hardest worker in the room, still learn and pick up things. You know, I was real curious with what you were doing and yeah. you were nice enough to explain some of that to me too, which was yes. fantastic. Yes. But I find that to be the most, uh, the best way to still be in love with your craft is to realize that you still have so much to learn about what you're doing. It gets me out of bed, it keeps me and, curious, and, and it keeps you growing. Uh, we, in Italy, we always think that Americans are the best or almost the best. But um, now you come in Italy and you have seen the bikes and the art scene uh, from the Italians. So did you get some inspiration? Did you get some new ideas? Or you think that America's scene is better or different somehow? What, what's your opinion? We had so many bikes here, so different so many styles. Bikes. So. Um, I wish I had more of an opportunity to walk around for one, I will say that. <laughs> um, I feel like if you are very good at what you do, there's no boundary around that. I feel like the best of American painters, um, by comparison to some of the work that I've seen here, are parallel. Okay. Um, I feel like the ones that are best at what they do never think they're the best at what they do. So they're Absolutely. always they're always looking around to grow and that's the and trick learn. to grow. It is. Um, the ones that I know who are the best at what they do have been doing the same thing for years and to me have plateaued a bit. Um, and I feel like either they, the, the magic for the craft ran out for them or their ego surpassed their love of painting. And I feel like that's, but that's a problem with everything, I think, creatively yeah, yeah. for that matter. In every field. Every field. Um, you have to reinvent yourself in such a way that you never get tired of it. Um, and I, like you said, it, it's it's the recipe for growth. It yeah. keeps you. But did you see? Did you see something that you when when I when you go stress. home and will say, "Oh, that was a good idea. I want to make an experiment." Some of what you showed me. <laughs> and I'm just gonna leave that there. Uh -huh. I, I, yeah, I'm just gonna leave that there. Some of I like I said, I, I should have taken more of an opportunity to walk around and take in some of what was around me but I feel like this was my first trip here. I wanted to make sure I didn't disappoint my host yes. coming here because I felt like I was obligated to, you know, I mean, you look at some of the talent walking down yeah, here. Absolutely. Yeah, I didn't want, I didn't want to fall short of expectation. So I think my nerves kept me seated here longer than I probably should have. Um, I didn't get the opportunity to probably see as much as I will. Hopefully, maybe in Verona I will. Mm. Would be the plan coming. Yeah, up. Um, I'm, I'm it, listening that maybe you will be in Verona. Maybe. We hope for that. Yeah, there, yeah, there, there could yeah, be a possibility yeah. there already. Um, I think I'll be a little bit more relaxed my next time out. You know, I'll know a couple more people. Um, I'll give myself more of an opportunity to walk around and see what's going on. Um, but sometimes I feel like shielding yourself from what everybody else is doing is kind of a key to growth in a different direction and kind of the pushing of an envelope too. So I feel like at times there's that balance. Um, where not knowing so much can be beneficial to new ideas of in a course. way. Yeah. So, you know, with, with airbrushing, I very rarely look at airbrushing. I look more at traditional oil painters. I look at, I have friends who are, are very good gallery artists, and I look at the way they put paint on a canvas, uh, the way it reads aesthetically, the way they move color around. Um, Right now, I'm working with uh, Frazetta, the Frazetta girls, or they kind of are in charge of a lot of Frank Frazetta's estate. Um, and we're working on replicating some of his oil paintings on art pieces, such as these two right here. But there's a command of uh, a technique there with an airbrush that needs to read like a traditional oil paint. So it's, it's you know, I've, and I wound up here organically. I didn't mean to be here as much as I enjoy oil painting. I don't enjoy the way airbrushing looks mostly. I enjoy the way an oil paint looks, but I'm more comfortable with airbrushing my hand. So I know I got off track here a little bit, but my point being is when you find yourself looking in different directions outside what is considered the norm, whether it be the, this culture or whatever creative culture you might be in, um, I feel like that's that's where growth happens uh, collectively eventually because people go, oh, what is he doing and where is that influence coming? And it expands everybody else's education a little bit because they're not all looking at the same thing. How quickly do you see a good idea replicated in, in, within the motorcycle scene? Yes. It's quickly. Once it's out it's there always and on an the evolution. market. Always. Always. Every day. But immediately a good idea, everybody grabs yes. it and it's everywhere and it's not so special anymore yes. and I feel like it's it's very parasitic. 
and I, you could say that about most creative endeavors these days. Um, but I find that once you start pulling, like you, like we were, we were at dinner the other night, and you were like, you pulled out your phone and you look at the textures from the wall that I yes, took a picture absolutely. of, and that's that's the way my phone reads too. And some of my 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 painter friends that I like most in in this. Um, they do the same thing. Our phones are full of these funny pictures that only a painter would understand. And it has nothing to do with what we see here as much as you're pulling from nature, you're pulling from, you're pulling from all of these different creative sources and you go, how can I have, make this work here in such a way that, that, that's beautiful, you know, that doesn't take away from a bike build but adds to the bike yes, build. It doesn't steal from it but becomes part of a larger picture. In other words, like, you're saying that you can get inspiration from everything. Everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I feel like sometimes it gets lost on, on, on the scene lately anyway. At least that's been my experience in the last five to ten years. Is everybody's looking for what's popular and emulating it and copying it. Whereas um, I feel like people should slow down a little bit, look inside a little bit, look around a little bit and isolate themselves a little bit to see what, what they have to say, not a second-rate version of what you have to say. Um, so, yeah, does that make sense? I, I ran on. I, I ran a little bit longer than that question, I think. But, so, so, you came uh, from New Jersey, you came in Italy. Yeah. Uh, where you was, uh, in maybe in some other countries? I mean, this is the first time that you've been colored for as an artist or you've been somewhere else? I came here back in the early 2000s when I was Always working. Always in Italy? In Genoa, actually. Yeah, yes. but I mean in, um, the, in other countries? Germany. Germany? Yeah, right outside Frankfurt. Um, my partner Jen, uh, Jen Mayberry, and I taught a workshop right before COVID. Um, right, uh, I think... Uh, I can't remember the name. I know we were about 30 minutes from Frankfurt, yeah, not okay. far from anyway, Heidelberg Germany, either. Germany, or maybe you were. It was in, definitely in Germany. No, no, Germany. Huh? Yeah, um, we sp we stayed there about 10 days, taught a workshop. Um, I think we, we visited in and around Heidelberg area. Yeah, um, yeah Heidelberg. Took in, yes. Yeah, took in some of the uh, the architecture and local culture there. But again, a lot of these trips that that, that we take, um, whether it be work related or workshop related very rarely are vacation related. So I normally don't have a ton of time to go out and experience the culture as much as I hope some of the culture comes to me because my time is so limited. Um, but yeah. 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 Steve, as you know, this uh, interview is for our academy for uh, to push the beginner and the guys who loves airbrush and custom painting sure. to live our world. So do you have any suggestions, some ideas, something you want to share that comes from your own history and you want to tell them? Sure. Um, I would say first and foremost, make sure you really love what you're doing. Um, don't do things because you think other people will think it's cool. Or um, bef before that, learn your craft. Learn what's going, you know, metal work to priming to fixing dents. Learn what's going on underneath the surface before you learn how to paint the surface. Understand your materials. Understand the things that you use to put on, you know, paint. Learn your guns. Learn your airbrush. Learn how to take them apart. Fix them. Maintain them. Take care of your equipment. It's so important. Um, like like a pianist to their favorite piano. These are your things, you take care of them for your lifetime, hold on to them. Um, but love what you do is, is the most thing and, and, and work hard at it. And um, as I grew up and my, my father told me, be, be the hardest worker in the room. Um, work harder than the next person. There's always somebody better than you. I find that being a little bit competitive with what you do really, really helps. Be competitive. Be competitive. Get your grid. If you're the best person in the room, find another room. Yes. That you're not the best person in the room. Um, when you're around good artists and people who've been doing it a while, keep your mouth shut and fucking listen. 
just listen because there's so much information out there from people who are now passing on, getting too old to do it, that are so, so full of so much knowledge and wisdom. Um, listen to these people, like they know what they're talking about. Um, uh, John Kosmowski is a great example. Uh, I was talking with him uh, a few months ago and he's in his mid 80s now. He is still as excited about paint and pigment and chemistry now. You would have thought he just started doing it and he's been doing it for 60 years. Um, that's the kind of passion that you want to try to put yourself around and the kind of person that you want to be. Um, as, I've go uh, as I've gotten older and been around a little bit, you know, if you get good at your craft and people start looking at you for your craft, you, it's a position of privilege. Take the time to explain things to people who may have a question for you. Um, Never give up. No, no, you can't, you know. And I feel like those that don't are the only reason they haven't is because they gave up. Um, don't listen to anybody else but, 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 but the voice that's inside you. Your heart. Yeah, that's it. And it sounds stupid to some people, to the grown-ups, um, but it's still my guiding light to this day. Uh, it's the most important thing for me is to still listen to what my inside tells me to do, and that's what I follow. And it took me here, it got me here. You know, I'm sitting next to you, the great docks, um, in Rome at the Eternal City Show, you yes. know, from a small little town. It's a great in opportunity. New Jersey. Yeah, great. Yes. And I knew nobody in the scene, I knew nobody in the custom scene at all when I started. Nobody at all. Um, and now I sit amongst people like yourself, and that's, that's a privilege. And I, I, I cough that up to just working really hard and loving what I do. So that, that would be my, my advice. Love what you do and work hard at it. Steve, the privilege is for us to get an interview with you. Oh, well, thank and you for having we me. We hope really to it. see you in Verona. I hope to be in there. In 2023. Yes. And we hope to come and visit you in New Jersey. I would Why love not? that. Yeah? I would love that. that Absolutely. That would be great. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much for everything. Yeah. And, uh, and thank you for the interview. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Steve see Gibbons you again. for um, uh, AK Academy uh, of Let's Sorry. do it again. Gibson. Gibson. Steve, <laughs> Steve Gibbons. Gibbons. Gibson. 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 Like, Gibson. The like, like the guitar. Like the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> See. Steve Gibson for Ak Academy. Oh, this is very bad. That's good. We can have an outtake. It would be good. Yeah. yeah. We can have a blooper reel. Blooper reel. <laughs> Steve Gibson for uh, Ak Academy. Alla prossima, ragazzi. Ci vediamo con altre fantastiche interviste. Ciao. Ciao.